this video I want to show you my custom setup for my alarm clock. Here you can see it in action on my dashboard. The whole setup uses a lot of different helpers, scripts and automations. So instead of showing how to code it, I will go through it and explain it. It might look overcomplicated, but it works for me and it grew with time. I hope you will find this video useful. If you want the full code, you can find the link in the description. Okay, let's look at it on the dashboard. On top I have two toggles, one for the light alarm and one for the sound alarm. The light alarm one slowly fades in the lights in my bedroom and the sound alarm one plays an alarm sound on my alarm clock. I'm using a Lenovo alarm clock, which has a custom Home Assistant dashboard. However, this can be used with any speaker you can control from Home Assistant. Underneath, we have a big section in which you can set the alarm. This is the time for the sound alarm. I want the light alarm to go on before that, so when the alarm rings, I already woke up from the lights. So in the bottom left, you can see the light offset. This is set to 20 minutes, which means 20 minutes before the sound alarm, the lights will turn on. If I change this, or if I change the alarm time, the light alarm time will change automatically. The colorful buttons in the middle are the days. This way I can decide which days the alarm should be turned on. Right now the alarm is only turned off on Sunday. Let's change that for Saturday as well. As you can see, now the alarm is turned off. And now the alarm is turned on again. The last thing in this pop-up is the volume. Here I save the volume the sound alarm should be played at. Okay, let's now look at how this whole thing is set up. Here's my configuration file with all the helpers I need for it. You can copy this into your configuration file as well. It starts with a bunch of input booleans. Two for the alarms itself, the light alarm and the sound alarm. Two to determine if the alarms are running. One to snooze the alarm. And one to determine if today the alarm has already run. Below that I have one input boolean for each day. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Those are the colorful buttons from the dashboard. Let's continue with the input numbers. I have one input number for hour and one input number for minutes. As you can see, the one for hour goes from 0 to 23 and the step is 1. And the one for minute goes from 0 to 59, but the step is 5. This makes it much quicker to set the correct wake time. I also save the light alarm offset and the alarm volume here. For the light alarm offset, I can choose between 0 and 30 minutes and then for the alarm volume I can choose between 0 and 1, so 0 0.8 for example. Let's continue with the sensors. All of these are template sensors. The first one is the actual wake time. We just take the state from the hour and minutes number and put them together in a clock format. The next one is the light alarm time. As you can see here, we are subtracting the light alarm offset from the wake time. This saves a daytime object, which makes it super easy to use in an automation. For easier readability on the dashboard, I also save a sensor that just shows the time. The next few sensors are not necessary for the alarm setup, but I'm using them to display the correct things on my dashboard. First, I have a sensor that checks if the alarm is on today. This checks the day's input boolean and returns true if it's on. We do the same thing, but for tomorrow. For that, we just add the correct time to now to check for the next day. With these sensors, we can determine if the alarm is on. Depending on the time of day, which I'm also saving here in the sensor, we can either check if the alarm is on today, which we do in the night and morning, or if the alarm is on tomorrow, which we do in the evening. So that's the configuration. I hope you are still with me. Let's look at the script and automations we need to make this work. For the light alarm, I'm only using one script, the Sunrise Simulator. It looks very complicated, but basically what it does is it gradually turns on lights for a given time frame. I will show you how to use it in the automation. So to make everything work, we need four different automations. The first automation that runs is the one for the light. When the light alarm time sensor triggers, the automation runs. I have a few conditions here. In the first one, we use the same Jinja code we used for the sensor, and we check if the input boolean for today is turned on. After that, we check if the light alarm is turned on, and then we also check if anyone is at home. The automation itself is quite easy. Basically what we do is we turn on that the alarm is running, and then we call the script. For the script, it's really important that you give it some data. We will set a duration of 30 minutes, and then we also have to set the target lights. After the script is run, we can turn off the boolean for the alarm is running again. And that's the first automation. 
The second automation that runs is the sound alarm template. It fires at the wake time and then checks if the sound alarm is on, if the day is on, and if anyone is home. The only thing that this automation does is it turns on the input boolean sound alarm is running. And in a moment you will understand why. So when the boolean sound alarm is running gets turned on, the next automation fires, which is the sound automation. You can see it here. The first thing the automation does is to set the volume of the speaker. This is very specific to my device, so you might not need this, or you have to set it in a different way. After that, as long as the input boolean is on, we play the sound file on the speaker. We wait for 8 seconds and then we play the sound file again. For this, you need to add an alarm sound file to your local files. I put mine in config slash www slash sounds. When I hit the snooze button on the dashboard, the snooze automation triggers. This automation basically just turns off the sound alarm running boolean, waits 9 minutes and turns it back on. This is why I separated the template from the rest of the sound alarm automation. And this is everything you need for your own custom alarm setup. I hope this video was helpful and you learned something for your personal dashboard. As I said, you can find the link to the full code in the description. If you enjoyed the video, I would really appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribe to my channel. Check out my other videos in which I create more custom cards, show off cool hugs cards and a tour of my personal dashboard. We also just did our first live stream, so if you missed it, check out the VOD if you're interested. Thanks for watching.